Welcome to week four of Bible Studies for Life. Continuing today in the book of John, this great scene in the upper room. Today we're going to be in chapter 15 of John. Now we're not going to look at the first part. The first part I'd encourage you to read if you haven't read it recently, but the first part where Jesus talks about, I'm the vine, you are the branches, and uh, you know, staying connected to him. But we are going to look at the second part of this chapter where he talks about love and the need to love one another and uh, to show he, how he shows God's great love for us. Okay, before we dive into that, be sure and subscribe to the channel, like, comment, share it, all that kind of stuff so that we can uh, get more people on it. We appreciate you doing that. Thanks for watching. Let's dive into John 15. As the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. As the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. I want you to think about that just for a moment. I want you to think about how the Father has loved Jesus, how he has shown love to Jesus, the things that God has done for his son because of his love for his son and how he's acted in his life. And Jesus now says, I have this kind of love, the love that God the Father has for me. I have this love for you. So think about now the things that God has done and how he, uh, how through Jesus has shown his love for you and all the things that he's done in your life. How has God shown his love for you? He says, if you keep my commands, so, so then remain in my love, stay there, live there, this abide, take up residence in the midst of God's love. It's not just that we know that God loves us. It's not just that we, that we tell others that God loves them. It's not just that we are uh, conscious of his love, but that we, we, we live in his love, that we, that we are surrounded consistently and constantly by his love for us. And we remain in that place where he can show and exhibit his love for us. He says, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. So you keep his commands, you stay in a place where he can show you his love. Now, it's not that he doesn't love us when we're disobedient. Certainly God does. But it is to say that uh, uh, when we're disobedient, when we're, when we're selfish, when we're greedy, when we're self-centered, we, we move out of a place where God can freely and easily exhibit and make, make evident his love for us so that we lose sight of his love. And then when we lose sight of it, we be, might begin to think he doesn't love us anymore. You know, that might come up. So you remain in his love, keep his commands, you will remain in his love, just as I've kept my father's commands and remain in his love. You see the life that Christ lived. He said, I lived my life following his commands. I was constantly in, in, uh, in connection with and in, in, uh, influenced by the love of the father. So he says, now look, I've told you these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. You know what Jesus is saying? Keep the Father's commands, you will remain in his love, and in so doing, you will find true, lasting, permanent joy. And the reason that we are not experiencing joy is because we are not being obedient to him, and so we are not experiencing and seeing and living in the midst of God's love consistently. That, that it's not a burden to follow his commands, it's not... Uh, taking the, the, the life out of life, you know, it is in fact the fulfillment of all life. This is abundant life, full, complete, total joy found when you live in the middle of God's love, when, when you live in the middle of his love by being obedient to his commands. So this is my command, he says, love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down his life for his friends. Here Jesus gives them the great example. Here's what it means to love. Here's what it means to, to love others. You lay down your life. Now here Jesus is on the last night of his life here on earth, right? He is in the upper room with his disciples. He is about to be taken uh, prisoner, taken to the cross and executed for the sake of of the lostness, for the sin of the world, for the sin of his children who are right there, his disciples, he's dying for their sin. In just a minute, he is showing the greatest love, making the most amazing example of, of this. He is living this out. 
Jesus does not tell us to do something he is not going to do. He lays down his life for his friends. So this is how we love others. We give up ourselves. You cannot be selfish and love somebody. You can't. You can't be self-centered and love other people. If you're going to love somebody, you're going to have to get out of yourself. You're going to have to be selfless and and emphasize your concern and your care and all that you can do for them before yourself. You you have to this is you have to lay down your life. This is the way Jesus lived. This is the way Jesus loved and this is the way we also should do that. He says, "You are my friends if you do what I command you." I do not call you servants anymore because a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. I've called you friends because I've made known to you everything I've heard from my father. Now, I love this. This is an interesting verse, isn't it? You consider Jesus, I mean, if you set the scene, right? Here's Jesus in the upper room and he's washed the feet of the disciples and uh, they've had these conversations, very in-depth, deep conversations where he's tried to tell them about what's about to come and where, what he's about to go through. They're having the Lord's Supper, you know, what we call the Lord's Supper. They're, they're having the Passover meal together. And then Jesus takes part of that Passover meal and institutes the Lord's Supper. And, and in this intimate setting, with these men that he spent the last three years with, I mean, living with them, eating everything with them, traveling with them every, every day. Right. He says, you know, you're not my servants. You're my friends. I don't call you servants anymore. Servant doesn't know what his master's doing. I've called you friends because I've made known to you everything I've heard from my father. Jesus says, I, I've, I've told you everything. A master doesn't reveal to his servant everything that he's going to do because it's not the servant's purview to know that. It's not his business, you know. He doesn't need to know. Um, But the friends he talks to about, this is what we're going to do. And this is what Jesus is treating them as a friend. Well, there's a difference, isn't there? Um, Not to say that he's not still Lord and we're still servants and slaves. Paul says that I'm a slave, right? But there is another aspect of this relationship that Jesus is opening up to them. Just like when, when he taught them how to pray in Matthew, and he, and he said, here's how you pray, our Father, our Father. He changed that relationship between the people and, and God, the Father, right? And here he's changing this relationship to say, we're not, you're not just a servant, but you're a friend. I'm revealing everything to you. I'm, I'm opening up all of this. You can see all of this. You're my friend. You didn't choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce fruit and that your fruit should remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. This is what I command you. Love one another. Jesus is letting them know, you know, I I picked you guys out and and I, I gave you roles. I gave you jobs, responsibilities. I told you to bear fruit. I've, I've, laid all these things out for you you know I've done all that I can to tell you everything that I I want you to know and and, you know you think it's his you know he's given his last words and he says listen this is what I command you this this is what you need to know love one another with all of these other things love one another and and you know, we'd think that in the church, well, that'd be easy, right? But it's not because, you know, the church is full of all these people. <laughs> love one another. Love one another. Live your life unselfishly before them. Love them. Care for them. Give yourself to them. Sacrifice for them. Want to see their best. Work to see their best. Love one another. Love. I mean, you know, it's just over and over. We can say it over and over we probably need to remind ourselves over and over and over again, God, Jesus told me to love them. Now, I don't want to. I don't like them. Uh, I, don't, I don't like having to, but, but I'm going to follow Jesus because I want to live in his joy. And if I'm living in his joy, I'm going to have to learn to love them. Love one another. Well, I hope that helps as you uh, study this passage. I'll leave you a couple of questions there you might want to ask them. But anyway, I appreciate you watching. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for watching. Um, Share it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Comment. Like. All that kind of stuff. We're growing the channel. Excited that you're watching. We'll see you next time.